Hi, I'm Joe Painter and welcome to another edition in one of my favorite series here on the People Chronicles and it's called The Untold Stories of Berks County Artists and I must say thank you very much to the Pennsylvania Partner for the Arts, the Berks Arts Council and the Why I'm Missing Foundation for making this series possible. I've met artists and talent that's just kind of mind-boggling <laughs> and with us right now is Michelle Byrne. Hi Michelle. Hello. You were looking at the series and you commented that you're, you're an artist in Berks County yes. and in that series you only knew of one other one, so you were right. introduced. Yeah, so it was a learning tool for me as well, yeah. This is a hotbed, this area, for artists. Yes, it is, and it's becoming more so, I think, with the Goggle Works and more people are coming to town. I didn't yeah. think about the Goggle Works as being possibly one of the reasons. Yes. How did you get started? Oh, wow, I always loved to draw. Like, I remember having those little snack tables in the living room and drawing from my dad's uh, hunting magazines or whatever really? I could find. Yeah. And so you then, drew from pictures? Yeah, and then when I went to kindergarten, I remember this, like, clearly. We had done Santa Clauses, and the teacher said, we're going to put Michelle Moyers, that was my name, on the bulletin board because she's a good artist. And I went home like, wow. I'm a good artist. <gasps> I was so excited, and I decided that day I was going to be an artist. <laughs> That's because I didn't know I was good. I was home. You know, we lived in the country. I was drawing all the time. I didn't know I was any good until she said that, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be an artist. You know, that so. speaks volumes to the messages we give children. Exactly. You know, we, we learn what we live, and we meet up to what we're told. Right, right. So that was a pretty cool gift, your kindergarten teacher. Yeah, but then there was another one that <laughs> my guidance counselor in high school said, you can never make a living as an artist. Oh, no. You're Don't be an artist. <laughs> really? Yeah, so that was kind of, so it took me a while after that. But <laughs> Well, that begs the question. And when she told you that, or he, your guidance counselor, um, said that, that's not necessarily uncommon advice. You know, make right. it a hobby or an avocation, not a vocation, because it's perhaps difficult to make yeah. a living as an artist. So how do you do it? Well, um, well I took her advice. <laughs> And I went to uh, Kutztown for graphic design. Oh, okay. So I got my uh, degree in communication arts. And, um, but I still always painted on the side, you know, as much as I could. And then, um, so I was doing graphic design for about 20 years out of my home. I raised my two kids. And um, then when September 11th happened, yeah. like all my clients were going, well, you know, we're going to do our own desktop publishing. We're going to save money. And I thought, that's it. I'm going to paint. I used to paint at night and do graphic design all day, and then I decided to paint during the day and do a little bit of graphic design. So I kind of phased that out, and now for the past 15 years, I've been painting full time. So it sounds like you did have a plan A and a plan B. Well, you, know, you just, were multi leveled in terms of income. Yeah. yeah, but in the beginning, the painting wasn't much of an income because <laughs> I wasn't getting much done. Because, you know, I had two kids running around, so right. I would paint, like, up until 3 in the morning. I'd just paint when it was quiet, you know. And I was a single mom, so it wasn't, like, a lot of time. But, um, but then, you know, I, I realized that to get my art out, well, first of all, I met a woman that helped me with marketing. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, you have to get your artwork out everywhere, you know. So I would hang it in restaurants. I'd hang it wherever I could, libraries, uh, retirement homes. You just went into these places and say, man, I hang paintings. Yeah, kind of. And then did you put a tag with it so it was for sale? Mm -hmm. So okay. that's how I started. And you know, then, then I started doing um, different art shows. And then uh, I think it was in 2006, my marketing friend said, come to a plein air event down here in Maryland. And I was like, OK. you know, Because I always did paint outside because I like to be outside. So I did this plein air event. And then I did another one in Annapolis, which was a pretty big one. And I won, like, second prize. And I was like, oh, wow. There's another kindergarten I'm do, moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do more of these, you know, because I can paint fast, and I like to paint loose. And it was kind of like I just, she helped me discover my, what my thing was, you know. So then I started getting Plein Air magazine, which tells you all about these events. So there's actually competitions where, like, you have to apply, and they look at your slides, or now it's digital. And if they like your work, you get invited. And then they take 25 to 30, sometimes 60 artists. And you'll paint for a whole week. You have to get to the back of your canvases stamped so that they know you didn't cheat and paint it before you got there. Oh. So you have to get that done. And then you just paint for a whole week. And then they have a, usually it's some kind of museum or gallery or organization that hosts them. And then there's big prizes, you know, sometimes. Sometimes they're little prizes. 
Uh, sometimes they're $5,000 prizes. You have quite a resume. This is, there's a whole bunch of questions in, in this story that you're sharing. Okay. Your resume is a long list. And yeah. so you have showed at multiple places and won multiple awards. Um, you said that you found your mode or your niche, yeah. which is plein air, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which simply means painting outside, correct? Right. Yeah. Isn't there a difficulty or a challenge to that because the lighting changes as you're painting? Exactly. <laughs> So that's, that's the kind of a trick, right? That's the challenge. And I, um, I think in the beginning, I was winning a lot of prizes because I put people in them. You know, like the one back there, that's a studio painting, but I did a smaller version of it. And this is where? That's in Cuba. OK. So I was down there in February. But um, I put people in them. And so the people have to be loose because they're moving, you know. So and this one. Oh, wait, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. I'm thinking, what do people have to do with it? They're not static yeah and so like this one over here that was a cafe and you know people nobody sits still so i have to like take a mental picture and put the people in and in the beginning i was one of the few people that did that so i was winning a lot of prizes but now a lot of more people are adding people in but it's, it's very difficult but it's challenging and it keeps them really loose and impressionistic because they're not sitting there you know what i mean so when you say loose there is not facial details, right. there's not, there, you can tell it's a person, but right. you're not gonna tell who it is. Yeah, it's more like the impression. Except for this. Well, that, that one I did from a photograph. Tell yes. me about this gentleman. Okay, well, I was in Cuba, and I was painting, you know, different scenes, and I saw this cafe, and it was across the street, and I loved the awnings, and we had very limited time in Cuba. We'd have like two hours, and then we'd have to catch the bus, so it was challenging. So this was a plein air trip? Yeah, Okay. so there was uh, 70 artists in Cuba. Oh my. And, um, and typically when I'm painting a restaurant or something, I'll go inside and eat there first and get the feel of the place and everything. But uh, this time there was no time for that. So I had started the painting and I thought, well, at least I'll go in and use the restroom because I had to. So, <laughs> so <laughs> on the way out, this man and another man were sitting you know, right inside here in, at, the, at a table. And um, I learned, this was only my second day in Cuba, but I learned if you take someone's picture, you have to pay them because I, there was an old woman in the square with a cigar and I went to take her picture and she went like this. And she goes, oh, and so okay. they wanted a kook, which is a dollar. So when I saw this man, I had already given <clears throat> three other people kooks to for pictures. So I laid one on the table and I said, I'd like to take your picture if that's okay. And he goes, no, no. He goes, I work at the cigar factory. I'm a representative and a tour guide. And he gave me his business card and then he let me take pictures. and. And it didn't cost a kook? No. <laughs> so, uh, so that was an interesting... And what, what I mostly love about plein air painting is those stories and the people that I meet. <clears throat> well, you... Do you... I saw this somewhere. Perhaps it's a signature in your email, the art of conversation? Yeah, that's kind of my theme. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting yeah. because my business is the art of conversation. Yes, exactly. But you took it to a literal <laughs> meaning. Right, right. And I really got a kick out of that. Yeah. So. If I were to ask you, where's your inspiration? Where do you get your inspiration? Is it, is it from people you meet? Uh, people I meet in places I go, and um, colors, light, <clears throat> sunlight. I love reflections. I paint a lot of rainy street scenes. So I don't know, it's just whatever. Rainy, why rainy street scenes? Because I like the reflections. They're really um, <clears throat> kind of abstract. You know, I get really mm -hmm. crazy and loose with that reflections. So. You mentioned <clears throat> um, when we were setting up that this is a print. Correct. Yeah. And these are original paintings. Yes. And you pointed out you could tell because of the, the shine. So once you sell an original, can you make multiple <clears throat> prints and continue? Like if that's sold and I really wanted it, could mm -hmm. I get a print? You can't. <laughs> but I could. <laughs> I mean, there's a copy. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> there's copyrights with them. Like you couldn't buy it and go get prints made. Oh, but I mean, Legally. no, I didn't mean oh, that. Okay, okay. No, I didn't mean that. I apologize. No, no. I meant once that's sold, that doesn't mean I can't still attain an, a print from you, is what I meant. It all depends if I get them scanned. Like, mm -hmm. like the 11 or 12 that I did in Cuba, I got scanned and I got prints made. So there's multiple ones that are so, available for Yeah, so I'm doing okay. like 25 copies of each one. And then, like this one, I did not get a print of because it's, I just didn't, I mean, it's expensive to. What is that? Is it a cathedral? 
Yeah, it's a uh, it's called Plaza de la Cathedral. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, it's one of the oldest. It's not the oldest, but there's five big plazas in Cuba, and they're beautiful. Because when I was there, I thought, oh my God, this is like being in Paris. I don't have to go to Paris anymore, and they're just like amazing. But then as soon as you leave that particular plaza, the city is like crumbling. You know, it's wow. Yeah. So Cuba has been closed for so long. What what surprised you, if anything, there? What was the biggest takeaway? Um, just how beautiful it is and how old and historic it is. And um, so it's like stepping back in time into the 50s. All the cars are from the 50s. There's the horse carts and bicycle mm. carts. And, you know, it's a step back in time. I, um, I was surprised that the poverty, even though they're poor, they're happy. They seem happy. I don't know if they are or not. Again, another, another, more proof that money doesn't buy happiness. Exactly. And maybe all the technical stuff we have is, it's a good thing they don't have it. You know? Right, but right. They were, the people were amazingly friendly everywhere we went. And um, <clears throat> they were honored that we were painting their country. And they were also excited about the possibility that we may be able to come you know, and probably because that will give them more income. Yeah, you know, stimulate so. their economy. But they were. Who were your mentors along the way, Michelle? Um, I think a lot of the Impressionists, you know. I, when I first started painting, I didn't realize, I mean, I painted outside since I was a teenager, but I didn't realize that was a whole movement and everything. But a lot of the Impressionists, like, you know, of course, Monet, and I love Toulouse the Trek because he used to sit in the bars and draw. Yeah. He was just amazing. And, uh, uh, there's a lot of mentors today. There's an artist named C.W. Mundy, mm -hmm. and he kind of taught me. Just a year ago, I took a class and learned a lot about using a palette knife. And um, so there's so many, it's hard to think of any right on the spot. But If there's somebody who, you know, a young person you might meet, and, and they really enjoy art in whatever form is their niche, what's the best, and it's, it's always tough to say the best piece of advice, but what is a a piece of advice you'd really like to share with that person to encourage them um, other than, well, you're not going to make a living at this. <laughs> Just, exactly. What would yeah. you share? Uh, I would probably say you can make a living <laughs> okay. because um, you really can. I mean, I know hundreds and hundreds of artists that are making a good living, but what you need to do is have passion and drive and work your butt off. <laughs> Oh, see, that's good to hear. Yeah, I think there's a perception of, oh, you're an artist, you like to do that, it must be easy. No, and I think um, people think that. It's not like we were born with this talent, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that I was born with a talent, but I pursued it, and I, I mean, I paint constantly. And I think if you work really, and I have two sons, and I always told them, you can do anything you want, as right. long as you love it, and you, you know, within reason, you know, my kids couldn't be football stars because they're not good at football. You know? But within reason, I think if, if you chase your dreams and you have a passion for them, that you can attain them. I truly believe that. And you hit on another issue. You said, you said, well, I believe I have a talent. Well, you obviously have a talent, but a talent is that. It's up to you to shine it. Exactly. And, and then yeah. put it back out there. And you do that very, very well. well there, if you I could would, just kind of sit if, and look at those If flowers. I would have showed you some of my... First plein air paintings, you would have went, oh. Well, so you've seen an evolution in <laughs> oh your own God, work. Yeah, yeah. But and it's because I've been working at it so hard, you know. So that evolution comes from practice, from doing. Exactly. Much like anything that we do. Yeah, because I think a lot of artists think that they're going to paint and get discovered, but that doesn't happen. You have to get it out there in front of people. You know, you can't just paint and keep it in your basement, so couple of pieces of good advice from this story with <laughs> Michelle Byrne. I do have a question, and you okay. know this one. It's the untold stories of Berks County artists. Okay. So what's one thing that you would like to share about Michelle Byrne that most people don't know? Okay, well, I did have to think about this one a long time, but it's that I have my motorcycle license. Nice. Yes. Nice. <laughs> do you have a motorcycle? No. Did you used to? When I was 12, my father taught me how to ride this little trail bike, and then I kept riding a bigger one, and um, he still owns it, as a matter of fact. Aww. And uh, so it's on my license, and I'm going to, he says he's going to give it back to me. It's like a 1971 Yamaha. Really? And, I, I would and it's like, not a dirt bike. It's a it, it is like a dirt bike, yeah, but you can make it street, street safe. So anyway, I, when I was 16, I took my test and passed my license, so I have it. And I kept it on my license because I thought, well, 
It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's pretty it's cool. A, it's another accomplishment. So when you yeah. see a motorcycle with a backpack and, uh, you know, an easel <laughs> out the back, that's Michelle Byrne. Exactly. Give her room. Right, right. <laughs> uh, where can we find your art? Uh, MichelleByrne.com. Mm -hmm. It's one L. And uh, B-Y-R-N-E. And um, Facebook, Facebook page. I blog. Trying to learn Pinterest and Instagram. But it's a lot to learn so all the happening. social media. Yes, I know. Yes, yes. You will find this on the peoplechronicles.com on the untold stories of Berks County artists. And we will expose that on social media. Be sure to share it because that's how we learn more about art. Yes. And you never know who you share with that you might be inspiring to pursue exactly. the same. Yes. Michelle, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.